What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Next up, we got Fredo Bang in therapy. We don't really react to Fredo Bang on this channel, but we're going to change that because lately I've been fucking with Fredo's music. Despite of me being a fan of the NBA crew, we rocking with Fredo Bang, at least the music. I don't really care about the boys' beef. Music is music. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let's go ahead and get into it. Fredo, finish Young King. This is Charlemagne. Just sending you this note to remind you about what we talked about. Remember, therapy is not about fixing you, it's about helping you to heal. All right? Go to therapy, man. Go to therapy. The life you save will be your own. Yep. I'm Ronnie Carney, and I'm a psychotherapist located in Texas. And today, I get the opportunity to sit down with rapper Fred Obey. And we're going to have a conversation about... Okay, before we continue, how do y'all feel about therapy? Do y'all feel like it's beneficial? Do y'all feel like it ain't worth it? I want to know how y'all feel about therapy. And later on in the video, I may tell y'all how I feel about therapy. But let's continue. The importance of mental health and highlight mental health in the hip hop community. Fredo as we talk today? Yeah. Um, so what are your best hopes from talking with me? Um, my best hopes. I don't know. I, I tend not to go into things with too many attentions. Okay. It's like relationships. I don't really be like, if I start talking to a chick, she acts like, well, you see, I don't, I don't be like, I don't like got no goals or no, mm. we just see where it go. Okay. And, um, if this happens to go in a way that you were pleased with, like, how would you notice it? Like, what what differences would you imagine you'd like to see from this? Uh, maybe a little relief. Okay. What difference would it make for you to have relief? Less stress. Okay. And uh, would you be pleased to have less stress? Yeah. Right. Anything else? A direction of happiness or hmm. a sense of... It. How long has this been happening that you've been this sad? Mm. Some years. Do you remember what it was like before the sadness started? Mm. I wasn't happy, but I didn't have as many problems. Huh. Like, because I didn't like have the opportunities to, to have those problems but like that's just for you for labor problems I wouldn't have labor problems when I wasn't rapping <laughs> that's right um HOA problems I ain't had HOA problems when I ain't have a house you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. well before I did my time it was a battery charge an aggravated battery charge and a um what was the other one an attempted murder and then I went to, back to jail for a gun charge and you said before you did your time, how much time yeah. did you do? Two and a half years. How'd you get through that? Huh. <laughs> I survived. How? Like, and when I say how, I mean like, like what inside of you did you draw upon to get through that? Uh, I got to the point where I just was saying I wasn't going to let anything affect how I felt. Or uh, like made me red because I had a bad temper problem. So when stuff made me mad, I used to flash out or uh, flash out. And in jail, you can't uh, do anything about anything because it's out there and you in this brick wall. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. it was either I was just going to let it drive me crazy. Cause like once I get mad, I start sweating, my body start itching, all type of stuff. Yeah. 
And like, I'm just, just choose not to care. And you just decided that, like, I used to have this anger problem because you, you said used to, it's like past tense. Yeah. And you just decided to be different. Yeah, I would decide I just can't care about it. Did that help you? Yeah, it got me through that. Okay. But I also had, I had my mom up to talk to and I had my girl at that time, uh, my support system. How did your mama help you? Just talking to me every day. Does that comfort you when you can talk to her? Yeah. What is it about her that you find comforting? Mm, I don't know what mama's boy, I love my mama. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I guess, I also, most of my life, like even going to college, I only went to college to try to please her. Is pleasing her important to you? Yeah. Hey! Hey! Where we going? Shrimp and burger, baby. Just taking the shrimp burger. Out. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, are you married? No. Uh, any children? Yes. How many? Two. Two. What are their names? Peyton and Parker. Boy, or girl. Both boys. Both boys. Man, okay. Um, what's your favorite thing about being a father to Peyton and Parker? Probably going to sleep with them. Really? Yeah, it's comforting. But f why? What is it about that that you find comforting? I don't know. It's just a feeling that you get, like just sleeping outside and the little breaths, the little snores and stuff <laughs> like that. Just mm -hmm. really happiness. I can just sit there all day. It's the little How things. How do you hope their lives are different in the way they're growing up compared to the way you grew up? Uh, <laughs> Um, there's a lot of things I was. I hope that they never witness uh, or feel. Can you give me an example of something you hope they never witness? Um, a death. Oh wow! Have you witnessed death? Yeah. Uh, how old were you? Uh, different ages, but multiple well, times. Yeah, but it's the the. The biggest one would be um, when I was like 17. Um, there was three people at one time. And why would you say that's the biggest one? Were they close to you? Yeah, well, one of them was, but that was the most, that was the most uh, graphic time. Hollow tears busting out the mag, oh lord. I'm swallowed a lab out of zinc, plenty by the bag, oh lord. Had to slow down, but I'm still running from my. They had a. How did you get through that and become? I have to fast forward a little bit so that um, I don't get copyrighted. Who you are today, and I don't mean like success, I mean like a person that cares about people and fatherhood. Like how did you, how did you deal with that? Um, at the, that very second, it was more of a survival thing and, and and it, it was four people who got shot. One of them, I was more focused on trying to keep him alive and help him mm -hmm. than anything else that was going on. What did you do to try to keep him alive? Uh, keep him awake and stuff. Okay. Um. Hey, I remember, <laughs> I remember when I was like really, really young, um, me and my family got into a car accident and I was the only one that really got hurt. I had a huge ass concussion. Right, right here on the side of my head. I was in the back seat next to the um next to the the window, whatever. A school bus came rolling across the front of our car and the, the car shook and I hit my head so goddamn hard, bruh. And when I got to the hospital, my grandma, she was like, Don't fall asleep, don't fall asleep, don't fall asleep, whatever. So and it was like late, late at night. And I'm I'm a kid, so I'm I get sleepy. You know, you know how kids get sleepy early, whatever. So my grandma was like, don't fall asleep, don't fall asleep. She 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 just kept saying like, stay awake. And later on, as I got older, I found out like when people have concussions or like losing consciousness, you wanna keep them awake. 
and that makes a lot of sense or whatever but i've had many many concussions in my life and it kind of messed with my brain i ain't gonna lie to you it kind of messed with my brain the banger problem you described huh? yeah okay and and do thoughts and memories like that make it harder for you to be happy now mm-hmm I don't know why. No way. I mean, stuff like that. I try to. It's like way, way in the back of my mind. It's right. like it's like a a file cabinet. It's, it's stuff. It's like stuff way in the back. Yeah. So, not saying I don't care about it no more, but I done blocked it out so long that. I you ever uh, lost somebody? You had that like blank gut feeling yeah and then every time you feel like the next year so every time you think about them you get that mm. mm-hmm. so I don't get that no more because I guess because I lost some weight more and it's been so long keep a poker face so they can't see I'm really mad I know it's hard to tell but baby yes I'm saying trying to hold my anger like a lead when I get mad I want to sp- and how did you become the kind of rapper that would make a song like, yeah, I'm sad? What would make you want to do that? Um, Because when I make my music, it'd be more so of, uh, I, I listen for beats that I like, or I feel like got specific characteristics that I feel like will catch people's attention, mm-hmm. or it's pleasing to my ear. Mm-hmm. And then um, I just rap whatever the, because I freestyle everything, I don't really write no more. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't, write, I haven't wrote in years. So whatever I'm feeling at that moment, or my, you know, my mind is giving, telling me to give, that's what I give. And, and I was in the real. I noticed that a lot of rappers been saying that they don't write no more, and they just go based off how they feel, which I feel like it's a good thing, you know, because I feel like it's that raw and uncut type type deal but it's it's crazy how a lot of them has dropped the pen in the pad they said that time was it hard to expose the world to that that message you were sharing in that song oh no i feel like when it comes to the music it's my easiest way to be vulnerable and release how come one day i'm gonna make a song i don't know it's just just be more Mainly it'd be really me talking to myself my... or sometimes I'd be telling myself what I need to hear sometimes. Huh. And what would, how would you make a decision to do something like this and expose the world to a conversation like what we're having right now? Um, I mean, I'd be trying to be there with my, with my fans, but I don't know, I should be doing it with my so we trying to tell me to do. So. Um, so my last question, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna say a bunch of stuff to you. Um, how often do you like look at yourself and are proud of who you've become, and what you've done? Mm-hmm. No, I really I, I really was just talking about this uh, last night with somebody. I hate looking in the mirror. Really. Damn, that's deep. So I'm gonna... That's deep. This man says sometimes he hate looking in the mirror. That's crazy. And I'm not judging him. I'm not judging him at all because we all have insecurities. Insecurities, damn. (laughs) Insecurities. (laughs) We all have insecurities, so I'm not judging him, right? But that is pretty deep to come out and admit that he hate looking at himself in the mirror. That speaks a lot. I'm gonna share a few things with you. And one of the things I want you to know about me is I don't mind being wrong. So if I say something that that I'm thinking as a result of talking to you and you disagree with it, I want you to tell me like, no, that's not really accurate. It doesn't feel right or whatever. It's not um, 45 at night. I'm tired. But when I got called to come here and do this, I thought like, what kind of person would do that? Like. Mm-hmm. The, there's a whole bunch of people in it in the entertainment industry and I actually asked I was like 
what is this about? So they let me hear the song, uh, Yeah, I'm Sad, and told me that Fredo's never I, had an in I need to go listen to that song. Because I always see it on the internet, but I never got the chance to really um, listen to that specific song. If you like this, and he wanted to have his first one available to his fans. Yeah. And I thought, that's an incredible thing. It blew me away, actually. It made me start thinking, like, what kind of person is this? And then, as I sit here and talk to you, and you say things to me like, um, I take care of my mom. And you say things to me like, I enjoy my kids sleeping with me and feeling their breath and listening to the, their little snores. Um, those are incredible traits about a person. And then you, you say things like, um, I used to have an anger problem, I got incarcerated, and I had to fix that. You, and then I ask you, like, what, on the surface, it's like a simple question, which is like, what is your mom most proud of? And that was probably the question you had the hardest time answering yeah. the whole time we were talking. And I wonder, I wonder if you're spending too much time focused on what's gone wrong and not enough time giving yourself credit about the things that have gone right and who you've become. Because yeah. I also asked you, like, what are you proud about yourself? And you're like, you don't ever think about those things. Yeah. And I when, I, when I hear you talk, I think, what an amazing guy. He's got millions of fans and he wants them to benefit from his story. He's got kids and he's always wanted kids and he wants them to have a different life than, than he has. And, you have bills, but you are able to generate money to pay them. But instead of focusing on like how you do that, you spend more time focused on how frustrating it is to get the bills. And I, as you were saying that, I thought like nobody has a perfect life. Like that's just the way life is. Like we all have uh, some negative things that happen and some positive things that happen. And the people who achieve the most happiness are able to focus on the positive things that happen. And for some reason, you don't seem to do that very well. No. Or very often, I should say. Yeah. Um, and I'd, I would love for that to change. Fred, I would, I would love for you to change that. Yeah. Can I, can I ask you to do something that might, that might change that? Yeah. Actually, I want you to do two things, Fred. Um, the first thing is how often do you, like, wake up and look around your life and just take stock of the things you're pleased with. Mm. Attend to the things you're pleased with, I should say. You're not, man. Okay. You mentioned you usually wake up and you look at your phone and there's news there that you don't like. Before you look at your phone, I wanna ask you to spend a couple of minutes thinking about how pleased you are with your life. Mm -hmm. Like you told me when you were a young kid, you wanted to make more money and be successful. And that dream has actually materialized. That has actually happened. Yeah. And even when, you, when I said that right now, like you smiled. Being able to think about the things that are happening well for you, that's how people find happiness and peace. If we, if we make our peace dependent upon the news we get and the people asking us for stuff and whether we win it or not, then happiness becomes a variable that's dependent upon the external world. But you're actually, like I'm looking at a person who's literally had their dream come true. I don't think you think about it often enough. No. <laughs> um, so before you reach for your phone, I just want you to remember like, I'm one of the lucky people that had a dream when they were you know, 12, 13 years old, whatever, and that dream has materialized. It's become reality. And not by accident, because you've worked really hard to be here early in their life, and that becomes a lifetime cycle. And you literally decided not to be that person. Yeah. And look at who you are, and I think you give yourself zero credit for that. But to me, that's like the most amazing thing I could ever learn about a person. I'm not really interested in how many times they fell. I'm interested in what they did 
So now I'm talking to a guy who's incarcerated for a while with an anger problem that is willing to be vulnerable in his music and share with his fans and devote himself to his kids and just spend time with them. Like, to me, that says way more about you than the mistakes. I just think you spend too much time thinking about the mistakes and the stressors. Yeah. So the second thing I would like you to do is as you go through your day, I want you to notice the difference it makes to focus on the good things. And I'm warning you, bad things are going to happen. You're going to get a big invoice from something. You're going to get a wire transfer is delayed. You're going to get show cancellations, whatever, you know, whatever the bad news is. But I want you to pay attention to what difference has it made for me to start focusing on the good things more than those things. Can you can you do those two things? Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> Is that cool? Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Keep a poker face so they can't see you're really mad. I know it's hard to tell, but baby, yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to go listen to that song. Hey, if y'all... Okay, so look, look, look. Before I end this video, I did tell y'all that I might, uh, I might tell y'all how I feel about therapy. So, I'm not against it, but it's something that I never tried, right? I wouldn't mind trying or experiencing going to therapy, but it's not something that I would probably just jump out and tell people to just go to therapy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not the type of person. I feel like different things work for different people. I'm more of a sit by myself, listen to music, meditate type person. And that's my therapy. You feel me? Like if I'm in a bad, a bad mood, I turn on my favorite playlist and you know what I'm saying? It, it, it heals whatever I'm feeling. You feel me? So I'm not against therapy. It is an option for some people. Some people may be against it. But for me, I've never experienced it. But maybe I will one day, you know? But if y'all enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and join the family. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.